going to be to thoroughly clean the pipe using a drain cleaning machine or a high pressure jetter. Once pipe is thoroughly cleaned with video inspection, please insert your camera into the pipe, pushing it down until it pans out into your main sewer line. You're going to want to pull it back a hair just so you know you're not protruding into the main line and wrap a piece of duct tape around the coax cable coming out of your pipe. Once this is done, you can then remove the cable place out onto the road or driveway and take a hard measurement off of the tape. Do not use the counter that comes on your cable on your camera machine as these are not always 100% accurate. Once the measurement is taken, it needs to be transferred over to your field installation sheet, which will be provided. From this measurement, you will get every other measurement needed. Our length of pipe to be lined is going to be 16 feet and 8 inches, accompanying any bends in the pipe. A half inch needs to be added for any 45 degree bends, and three quarters of an inch needs to be added for any sweeping 90 degree bends. From this measurement, we can multiply it with our multiplier to get the amount of pounds per linear feet of resin to be mixed. As shown, 16 feet, 8 inches, multiplied by 0.85 pounds per foot for 4 inch pipe gives us a total of 14.3 pounds of resin. Two parts A to one part B gives us 9.6 pounds of A and 4.8 pounds of B resin. Second, we need to figure out how much of our calibration hose and our pull strap is going to be needed. This will all be done using the same calculation with our amount of pipe to be lined. You take the pipe to be lined, you add the amount of dry material from point of insertion into the pipe, you add four inches for the inversion head cuff back, and that gives you your total amount of liner that you will need to cut. The liner material is here, plus you add two feet for your calibration hose, that way you ensure that the bladder exceeds the end of your pipe. From that, you take your calibration hose length, you add the amount of delivery hose you have, in this case we are using a 5 foot orange delivery hose, in your case you will be using a 7 foot delivery hose, and that gives you your total amount of pull strap needed, this being 30 feet 6 inches long. Right now Doug is actually cutting his liner to the length specified. Once that is cut, he is going to pre-cut his full strap and his calibration hose as well. Right now he is marking his 4 inch cuff back on his liner, which is shown on the field installation sheet. The cuff back is going to be where the liner is inserted through to the through the head and cuff back and band clamped on. What's the total length of the liner? 16 feet 8 inch to be lined. Tonal lateral material is 20 feet. Uh, 20 feet even? Uh,
as shown, the, we have marked our four inch cuff back along with the amount of dry material. This is the point at which we are going to insert the liner into the pipe. Now we are cutting the calibration tube to two feet longer than the liner to ensure that it exceeds past the end of the pipe. You got knotted? Um, yeah. I can, I can do it after we pass it. The pull strap is cut to length, pulled through the delivery hose, pulled up into the air inversion unit, and pulled through the hole in the middle spindle. Keep in mind, pull strap thicknesses need to be varied for different size pipes. This strap is going to be used for 4 inch or greater pipe. If you're doing 2 or 3 inch pipe, you need to make sure that the pull strap is a thinner pull strap therefore it will invert easier through the pipe. Now Doug is winding the pull strap up into the inverter. The knot is now tied in the end of the pole strap, which we will use to tie a rubber band around when loading the liner into the inversion machine. Just a simple single round knot is sufficient. Now Doug is fastening the end of the liner to his inversion head, pulling the 4 inch cuff back to the mark. Needle nose pliers can be used to 